Clerk Segrist, call the roll. Trustee Anthony. Present. Trustee Foster. Good evening. Trustee Graham Hudeck. Good evening. Let the record reflect. Colder Segrist is in attendance. Treasurer Slavin. Good evening. Trustee Snyderman. I am here tonight. And Supervisor Williams. Hello. All present. Uh, call for a motion uh, to adopt the agenda as presented without change. So move. For. In favor of the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 The motion carries. We have one set of. Uh, Minutes for approval. Could I call for a motion to approve the minutes of February 12th, 2019? So moved. Second. In favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see. Now would be the time in our agenda for citizens' non agenda item, uh, which would be comments. If anybody would like to make any public comment at this time, now would be the time. Representative Colazar, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple things. I know I've met most of you at one time or another, but I did want to come formally introduce myself to the Board of Trustees. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Colazar. I'm the state representative for District 20, which is the eastern portion of Canton. For the most part, that's Lily to Lots, with a couple little exceptions here and there, and then all of Plymouth and Northville. Um, just a couple things. First of all, um, I want to thank uh, Supervisor Williams for meeting with me a little over a week ago. We went over some issues in Canton and how I could best serve um, Canton, that's one of the most important things to me is to be an asset to all of you, um, whether it's giving you information of what's going on in Lansing or getting your concerns up to Lansing. I really look forward to working with you and it's really just an honor to be able to help out where I can. Um, a couple things from my office, we do have a couple coffee hours coming up. One is in Canton, that is on um, Friday, March 15th at 8 a.m. and that'll be the Panera Bread on Ford Road. Um, the other one is on Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m. That'll be up in Northville at the Northville Public Library. Um, as far as the Lansing update, um, we are actually taking up our first um, couple of bills that we are voting on this week. Um, probably the one that you're going to hear about, and I'm assuming it'll probably be in the news in the next couple of days, it has to do with civil asset forfeiture. Um, that one is coming up for a vote from what I'm told on Thursday, most likely, as it did get out of committee. And what that basically is going to say is that now it's, there's going to be a $50,000 rule on what can be seized so um, without conviction, basically. Um, there has to be a conviction in order to seize anything $50,000 or under is, is the vote that we'll be taking. Um, beyond that, me personally, I'm on the Education and Health Policy Committee. So if you ever have questions in regards to those committees, please feel free to let me know. I can tell you the Education Policy one today. Um, we actually it passed out of committee 13 to 2 to um, basically eliminate the ACT work keys. It would become a local option and school districts would no longer, um, it would no longer be mandatory in school districts to give that the day after the SAT. So uh, it'd be a half a day back to the students for instruction in their classrooms and it would eliminate one test that students are mandated to take. So that is a quick little Lansing update for you. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have at any time, but uh, definitely look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, sir. Is there any additional public comment? Mr. Miller? George Miller, I'd like to go forward on an issue that we had here a couple of weeks ago. Solution device I mentioned in a meeting for, uh, for Woodland Metals. I'd like to know in the tax record, I'm underneath the impression, like I mentioned, that facility over there on Hannon Road is, um, gets a tax break or not being taxed, evidently, um, because it's a pollution device. There's a building there uh, purifying, it's not purifying the gas. Evidently, some time ago, there, selling that gas to, I understand, the fork at the plant there. So the facility out here on Lily Road, it, that's being purified and sold to uh, Michigan Self Consolidated Gas. So it has to be purified before you can sell it. So I'm underneath the impression these guys are on, uh, on Lily Road that they're paying some sort of tax on their facility. Or you have give them a tax break, but they're, they're paying partial or some kind of uh, tax on that facility. 
and Michigan. Both. I'd like to know, they, they have to purify it. So that's a pollution device over there on Hannon Road. I'd like to know why evidently there's a tax break on it for a pollution device. They're, they're, they have to, if they give it to Ford or sell it to Ford, they have to purify it. To purify it and to say, if the outfit of what I'm saying over on Lily Road in Michigan Avenue has to do it, why are these guys getting a tax break or they're different over there on Hannon Road? I want that explained. Good enough. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Is there any additional public comment? Is there any seeing no additional public comment? Uh, Treasurer Slavens uh, could call for a motion for the payment of the bills. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Second. Okay, those in favor of the motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now we have a public hearing. I actually have two public hearings this evening. The first one is a public hearing for the consideration of local government approval for Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory, Regulatory Affairs Liquor Control Commission uh, to provide a liquor license or review the liquor license application. Uh, Brian Finnerty, 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 Brian Finnerty, representing High Velocity Sports for a Class C liquor license with Sunday sales afternoon and evenings. Uh, mornings and evenings, and an outdoor service permit located at 46245 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, uh, up in uh, Michigan Avenue. So, um, do we have a motion to open? Mr. Supervisor, I move to open the public hearing at 7.07 p.m. to consider the request for a Class C liquor license for High Velocity Sports Group located at 46245 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, 48188 in Canton Township, Wayne County. In favor of the motion is presented, state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, you want me to go through the summary here? The clerk's office has received an application for a new Class C liquor license with Sunday uh, AM and PM and outdoor service permits from Brian Finnerty, the managing partner of High Velocity Sports Group, LLC. The township currently has five available quota licenses. One is tied to a PDD amendment in Uptown uh, by Cherry Hill. This applicant is requesting one of the remaining four. On January 8th, 2019, at a regular a meeting of the Board of Trustees, the public hearing was set for today. A public hearing notice was published on January 17th, 2019. On January 9th, notices were also sent to the address within the required 300 foot radius of high velocity. Uh, we do have a couple of representatives here this evening from high velocity. Uh, would you like to make comments at this time? Supervisor Brian Amen, on behalf of them as well as High Velocity, um, we're prepared to answer. I think yeah, obviously you have the information, the material, and we're prepared to answer any questions that might come up. We thank the township for considering this. This is just an, another important aspect of them trying to grow their business and retain business. So thank you. Any public comments? Any public comments? Okay, seeing none, make a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Supervisor, I move to close the public hearing at uh, I, mean, I might as well read my motion, I apologize. I move <coughs> uh, to close the public hearing at 7.09 p.m. to consider the request for a new Class C liquor license for High Velocity Sports Group located at 46245 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, 48188, Canton Township, Wayne County. Thank you. Those in favor of the second motion to close the public hearing, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, now uh, perhaps we call for the motion to approve and then we could have discussion on the board. Yeah. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the request for a new Class C liquor license with Sunday sales, AM and PM, and outdoor service permits for High Velocity Sports Group located at 46245 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, 48188 Canton Township, Wayne County. Thank you. Thank you. I guess now would be a good time to answer any of the board's questions or if any comments. Anne Marie? Mm -hmm. So, hi, thanks. I am at high velocity a lot, especially on weekends, soccer, baseball, um, indoor, volleyball. So, you're just asking for one for Sunday AM. There's a lot of kids there. I mean, there's kids everywhere. And from the drawings, it looks like you're keeping it to an enclosed place in front of the refreshment stand. But I also know that's where a lot of the families hang out and they eat the snacks in between games. So, how is that going to work? 
Thank you. First, I, I do want to introduce, I have John Staub here, one of the other partners with High Velocity, and Marge Budlong, the CFO of High Velocity here as well. So if there's anything I can't answer, I'll defer to them. But essentially, um, we have, uh, in the planning for this, uh, have the benefit of having looked at a lot of other um, exact similar facilities who are doing the same thing. So, and, and I know there's a concern when you're mixing alcohol in an environment where you already have children and maybe occasionally an obnoxious parent uh, already yelling at referees and or other things like that. So they've spent a lot of time and effort understanding exactly how that works. But this environment always has a lot of children. Uh, and so we had to make sure that we have systems in place, not only in our training uh, of the serving, but also the management of the facility to always be on the lookout for any concerns. And so that's part of the plan. Uh, this is really designed, it's, they, they don't expect there to be a lot of Sunday AM sales in this design, but they do a lot of corporate events, a lot of team building events for corporations in closed uh, facility, that type of a thing. So that's anticipated to be more. Also they have evening leagues that are, they're losing quite frankly to Novi and other places because uh, it, it's not uncommon for a lot of adult leagues for people to try to just want to grab a beer after they get done playing. And so right now, they either don't show up at high velocity, or if they do, they'll leave high velocity and drive to another establishment around. And so that's the purpose of this. But essentially, they, they are planning to bring extra staff around this, extra training, and always to monitor it carefully. Because fundamentally for them, this has to be considered a value add to the experience. And if for some reason it creates a negative experience, it's going to really defeat the entirety of their, their purpose of trying to create a family environment uh, for that. So they really plan on their training and their actual operation uh, to try to make sure they manage any of those issues. A lot of the other places you suggested have a separate area, I noticed, and this one doesn't. It's, it's, I mean, it's all just one small snack area. Right. And when you go into Wixom or something, it's kind of off to the side. So this, this, although you see the separate snack area downstairs, there's also, you know, the areas that are elevated above where it's not uncommon for uh, families and others to take snacks up into those areas as well. But although this is the common area where people typically get their food and sit right there, and it's, it's, uh, it is, it's planned to be mixed, but it's also planned to be carefully managed as to how they, how they plan to run it. So. so will the alcohol be in one area or people can it'll, carry it through the facility? It'll essentially be in that area for the service of it. And, and so now I've been advised by some people that they're already carrying alcohol to other areas in this building by their own uh, cups and devices. We're not aware of those kinds of things, but we've heard stories of that. But um, uh, so this essentially is this plan to be uh, served in this, in the center area in there. So yeah. You're just doing it just for the events, but you want it all the time, not just for events. The, the nature of the licenses are such that we have to apply for this kind of license because we can't predict when we're going to get requests for certain kinds of events. And so instead of coming back and saying, oh, we've got this other request, another request, the thought was to get the, request this license because we're ultimately going to have to always be responsible for the, the careful management of this anyway. And, uh, and because it's involving alcohol, there's extra responsibility, extra liability, so we really plan to train up for that. And we've observed the other operations of other facilities to how to really carefully manage that. So. Go ahead, Stephen. Um, thank you. I, um, you addressed uh, a lot of the concerns. The, you said extra staff, but I would like to see extra security. Um, this is uh, an area where people are competing in a heated way, either themselves or through their children. And um, I, I just want to make sure that everybody's safe and uh, adding alcohol to the mix sometimes can be difficult. So um, I'm inclined to vote for it, but um, I'd like the police department to sort of be on, on alert, the fact that we've added this in this uh, facility and um, we make sure that it's just a pleasant experience for everyone. So that's, that's my only concern. And we, we echo that. When I say staff, I include security. And uh, one of the ways they approach it, you don't necessarily know who's security in this facility because we try to be family friendly in all appearances, whatever. But, and everybody's trained in that regard. But we, we take that and we so note it. So. Thank you. More question? I don't know. So years ago, Arctic Edge also, I believe, applied for a liquor license. And they could not do it because of the um, kickers behind it. I guess there was. It was in a, within a certain distance, or if it was by the same owner. Do we? Do you know? I can address that. And at the time, the the folks at Kickers were in opposition to another license being issued in the area. The feedback now is was at one point favorable to neutral. And I don't know, Greg, if you got an update to that. 
There's a, a small difference in the way those properties are operated that um, Arctic Edge is on township owned property and they lease that building, whereas High Velocity purchased the property from the township separately, owns that, so it's completely independent of the township. So we don't really have any say there. So that was one of the factors with Arctic Edge. Obviously, we would love anybody who wants to purchase alcohol to come back to Kickers and utilize our facilities but we understand that there's really there's nothing in the contracts or agreements that would preclude them from doing so add to that mr supervisor we've also um the, we have support of the the management team at kickers because they're having a hard time maintaining their professional staff as it relates to service of alcohol our uh, provision of this service thinks they're going to be able to essentially have employees essentially work at both locations and that way they can keep a more professional staff on a more year-round basis uh, because of the nature of their business when the nature of our business is. So we think they're going to be compatible, quite frankly, based on the, the employment needs. So. No board comments, questions? Uh, John? No? Yes? No? Okay. All right. Um, that being said, um, anything you'd like to add, uh, Chad, at this point? No, sir. Actually, the only concerns we really have had over the years is in the parking lot with larcenies, and, and that goes to what we do, so we can respond to that, no problem. So we'll be, like uh, was asked of us, we'll be on uh, awareness. So. Yeah, you like me, your voice doesn't boom, so if you can pull down. Yeah, we got, <laughs> got most of it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, we'll be uh, on the lookout for your concerns. Michael? I'll just make uh, a brief comment. I think one of the interesting things about being uh, 35 years old in Canton Township is I typically, I, I'm not a drinker, but uh, if I am going to go out with people, we definitely go to Ann Arbor, Plymouth, Novi, Detroit. There's not a lot of opportunities for younger parents, younger families, uh, the parents of younger families to go out and do things uh, in the evening. So I think that having um, entertainment for uh, adults is uh, something that is lacking in Canton Township. But I think this is a great opportunity to fill that void. No further comments. Uh, those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Say none. Motion. Thank you. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. Have a good night, guys. Uh, now we have a second public hearing for approval to amend the five-year consolidated plan and the 2018 CDBG program year annual action plan. Mr. Supervisor, I move to open the public hearing to hear comment on the advisory council recommendations for the amended fiscal year 2018 community development block grant program at 718. Those in favor of the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. The CBD, the CDBG advisory council is submitting its recommendations for amendments to projects and project funding for the plan year 2018 CBDG Community Development Block Grant program as well as the five-year consolidated plan. The Department of Housing and Urban Development requires any substantial amendments be approved by the governing body. The amendment to the annual action plan and the five-year plan has been available for public for the 30-day public comment period and this meeting represents our second public hearing. <clears throat> is there any, uh, Wendy, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, sure, so if you recall, um, years ago, the township had applied for the Neighborhood Stabilization Grant Program, um, which helped redevelop some homes. We could take over homes that were in foreclosure and redevelop them and um, sell them to low income um, taxpayers. So. That, that plan, we have met the requirements of that plan, and we've been kind of sitting on this leftover pool of money uh, after, the, after we rebuilt these houses and people paid us for them, we get that money back, and you could either reinvest in this neighborhood stabilization program or um, it can end up rolling over into the CDBG program. So the federal government has eliminated that neighborhood stabilization program, and in fact, it was very difficult for us to find houses that were in foreclosure that low-income people could turn around and afford. So um, we are allowed to roll this over to CDBG. So what we are doing with that, that leftover $280,000 from that is we're gonna put that towards that park up on the northeast side. 
So we're going to help put that money there. Uh, and in addition, there was another another seventy-five thousand dollars that one of the previous recipients of the grant money was not able to meet the national objective within the time frame. So they paid that money back to us, which they are required to do. So we're taking that seventy-five thousand dollars and making improvements to the human services um, building that is required. So because those weren't in our initial plans, we had to take those back to the advisory council with those recommendations, they have agreed with those recommendations and therefore now it's to the township board. Um, is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? Seeing no public comment, make a call for a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Supervisor, I move to close the public hearing at 721. Support. There's the second motion to close. Uh, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Third motion. Supervisor, I move uh, to adopt the amended 2018 annual action plan and authorize the submission of the 2018 amended annual action plan and five year consolidated plan to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Thank you very much. This allows us to uh, formalize our update to um, HUD as required. Is there any board comments or questions? Uh, Summer? Just a quick question. What are what improvements are we making to the Human Services Center? Carpeting, security perhaps. Here, security is a major one with all the integrated security, um, carpeting, and I believe the roof, yes, the roof and gables also needs to be replaced. Uh, yep, and I'm the board representative on the Human Services Commission. Yeah, so one of the tenants that's coming in has a, extra security needs. Um, and so we've been, talked about this because obviously GrowthWorks is in there. They do client services at the Human Services building. And so um, trying to manage that building and make sure that people can, can enter, get, their, get services, leave in a safe and uh, you know, maintain environment is, is kind of the objective. But then there was the roof and, you know, the building is, I don't know if it was built in 2003, it's been 15 years now. So some of that stuff is, requires some updating. Current, currently it's all uh, key access. There's no scan card areas or anything like that that you see in this building. So there's, there's not the control that is necessary for that type of environment to keep people in the proper areas and make everyone feel as comfortable as possible. So that's a, a big undertaking to do that for all the wiring and security needs, but it's, it's necessary for that building and probably well past overdue for that. Thank you. When the directors got wind that there's $75,000 coming back into the system, <laughs> it took Greg about two seconds to say, I've got a place for it. I can so. imagine. <laughs> All right, any additional, yes, Anne-Marie? Yes, for the parks then, would that pay for all the equipment we were planning or do we still need more? For, for the Northeast Park yes. portion, yes. Yes, that would likely, we, we haven't finalized the plans for that, but it's anticipated that that would pay for everything that we need. It'll probably actually build a nicer park than we initially planned up there on the Northeast side because we were working with the, uh, the initial plan was the funds that were set aside from the property sale on the west side, which I believe was about 160, 165,000. So this would actually provide more funding um, for that park and provide some nicer amenities up there on the east side. All right, thanks. No further comments or questions. Those in favor of the third motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Then we have a fourth motion uh, to formalize the accounts where we move the money. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the following budget amendments and increase revenue, increase revenue um, to the account number listed in the amount of $355,000 and an increase expense in the account listed for the amount of $355,000. In favor of the fourth motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now I'll ask uh, Clerk Segrist to read the consent calendar in a single motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the consent calendar as written. Item C1, approve the request for a local government approval resolution for KRAB LLC at 50296 Cherry Hill Road, Canton, Michigan, 48187 for the approval of outdoor service area located on municipal property. 
uh, item C2, appointment to the Downtown Development Authority Board of Andrew Hargraves. Item C3, consider approval of application for MLCC special uh, liquor licenses uh, for Liberty Fast, Rally on Ridge, Bruce Bratz, Bands at the Barn, and Thursday Night Live concerts. Item, item C4, consider payment of annual GIS software maintenance fees to ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute Incorporated. No. That item was pulled from the agenda. That item was yeah. pulled from the agenda. I will remove that. Sorry. Still in my deck as well. I apologize. Not ours. It's okay. Uh, okay. Very good. Thank item, you for catching that, that, So Steve. the new item C4 that will replace the, what I just said, the request budget amendment for carryover of fiscal year 2018 open purchase orders to fiscal year 2019. Thank you. Second. Point of order, that fourth agenda item was in the everybody's packet, the C4 change. You saw that, the budget change? Okay, or budget. Yeah, yeah. Budget okay, amendment. Carry on. No. Yeah. My apologies. Just wanted to want double check. We're all good. All right. Those in favor of the consent calendar is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now moving into the general calendar, item G1. Consider first reading, consideration, approval of the third amendment to the Mosuri, Mocheri, I apologize for not saying that correctly, consent judgment and SN home, SNS homes rezoning form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to introduce and hold the first reading of the proposed amendment to Appendix A, Zoning of the Code of Ordinances, the Charter Township of Canton, as provided in the attached ordinance, which approves the third amendment to the Mosheri Consent uh, Agreement for commercial site number one and rezones the tax parcel listed from C2, Community, uh, community Commercial, to R6, Single Family Attached Residential District. Good. Uh, we have Brian Amon again with us this evening representing SNS Homes. And is it Mosseri or Mocheri? I, I think it just depends. Uh, you know, if you're Italian, it's Mocheri. If you're Italian, it's, else, it's Mosseri. So, yeah. So. Very good. Um, in summary, the applicant is proposing to amend the Mocheri uh, consent judgment for the remaining two acres known as commercial site number two to allow rezoning from C2, commercial, community commercial, to R6, res, uh, single family attached residential. Conceptual plan that is included with this amendment would permit construction of 11 residential units, five two-unit buildings, and one single detached unit. Are there any board questions or comments? Yeah, from a planning commission, I, I have some citizens' comments too, if Anne Marie doesn't cover. So please, go ahead. No, actually, it was interesting because the, the citizens were very positive at this meeting, and they really liked that it was going from residential, I mean, from commercial to residential. So they were happy about that. So all the, everybody who came up said so. I think we captured that in the minutes also. But like you, I marked the calendar. All, every citizen that spoke was spoke in favor of the project. I just marked the calendar, went home, and was like, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't happen for you, Brian, very often, does Not it? Not often. No. no. <laughs> it was good. So, and we actually even talked about that in the meeting. I think the only thing that was brought up, and you were supposed to, you were going to be looking at that still, was the, the deck going back, 35-foot setbacks. And because if there's a utility right of way there, the decks yeah, would have to be. That she's raising the issue that Mr. Gale has expressed concern about whether the decks we're showing on there and the setbacks we're calling are actually viable based on what is normally the placement of the utilities uh, by DTE. They tend to just come in in the rear and just run utilities uh, back there, and, and they have easements over there that wouldn't allow, would normally not allow you to, in fact, construct over them. Uh, you can construct over them, but they can come and rip them up at any point with no obligation to restore them or anything. Obviously, uh, it's a concern to us, but it's one that we'll be dealing with in the final engineering. Uh, and because we have the total control of this parcel and the control of the utilities that come there, we think we're going to be able to resolve that in our detailed engineering of this site. The residents would know that. if, if Right. That were... the, no resident will be even able to uh, enter into a pre-purchase agreement until we have all that information figured out. Yeah. Any additional board comments or questions? Okay. Seeing none, those in favor of the first motion presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Second motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move to table for consideration of the amendment for a second reading on March 12th, 2019. Support. Whatever the second motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Thank you. 
Item G2, consider approval of special land use request for fire station number two. <clears throat> Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Uh, approval of the special land use for fire station number two. Whereas the, pro the project sponsor, Canton Township, has requested special land use approval for a municipal building for a fire station on the north side of Warren Road between Lilly and Haggerty Roads, and whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the request and special land use criteria and voted 7-0 to recommend approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan, does hereby approve the request for a municipal building for a fire station on the tax parcels listed subject to all applicable local and state requirements. Okay, uh, Canton Township proposes to build a new fire station on the property currently occupied by fire station number two and the two adjacent parcels. Use of the fire station requires special use approval for municipal building in our five zoning district. The existing fire station is aging, which we all know, and needs to be modernized to effectively serve the community. Um, we did go through the ZBA, and they have blessed this, so now it's in front of you for your approval. Are there any questions? We've got uh, Jamie with us to answer any questions you may have. Our resident architect, Don Zuber, was impressed with the elevations. And you remember when we went there, how you could uh, smell the must and everything? So that's supposed to all be taken care of now. <laughs> Did anything change from the last time we had to approve something? Or No. Okay. So we're on target. Okay. Thank you. No further questions or comments at this time. Those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 The motion carries. Is it single or two? That is all one. Okay, very good. Item G3. Thank you, sir. Amy, you don't have to stay through the night unless you want. We've got a couple uh, other municipals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Item G3, consider waiver of finance policy, authorized budget amendment, and authorized purchase. Order to MTEC for a retrofit of the Canton closed circuit TV sewer inspection truck. The form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to authorize a purchase order to MTEC for an amount not to exceed $124,965 and authorize a budget amendment as follows increase revenue to the state grants fund in the amount of $86,223, increase expense to the machinery and equipment fund in the amount of $124,965, and decrease in expense to the transfer to fund balance account in the amount of $38,742. Good. In summary, um, the Canton Public Works applied for uh, and was successful for obtaining the Stormwater Asset Management and Wastewater Grant, also known as the SAW Grant, through the State of Michigan. The grant was awarded for a maximum amount of $2 million. The grant allows 90% to be reimbursed for the first $1 million spent and 75% for the second $1 million. The proposed retrofit of Canton's closed circuit TV and sewer inspection truck is reimbursable expense and we will be reimbursed at 75% of the cost. Along with the retrofit of the truck, we will be replacing the sewer inspection pole camera and sewer inspection push camera. Both of these units have exceeded their useful life and need of an upgrade. They also qualify for reimbursement through the grant. Thus far, the video equipment has inspected 125 miles of sanitary sewer sewer, categorized and graded the sewers and nearly completed the overall asset management plan for our sewer system. To date, we have received $1,472,380.21 in reimbursements from the state for this grant and uh, the funds for the extra CCT inspection upgrades and some of our other um, sewer specific equipment. Proposed retrofit project will utilize our 2011 truck chassis and replace all the operating closed circuit TV equipment inside the vehicle, which should give us another, well, hopefully several more years of service. Are there any questions for me, I guess? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. or, or Wendy's here too. It's, have you guys been in the truck? I, I've seen it out on the street, but. It's really cool. Next mm -hmm. time you see it, do ask to go in and see and watch what the guys are doing. It's very yeah. interesting. <laughs> Okay. Are there any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries Mr. Supervisor, I move to waive the finance policy requiring <clears throat> solicitation of bids due to the sole source nature of the proposed equipment purchase. 
Second. Favor the second motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Motion carries. Item G4. This is uh, Greg's favorite one tonight. Uh, consider approval emergency replacement of a sewage grinder station at Fellows Creek Golf Club. Form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the following budget amendment increase expenditure to the FCGC capital outlay machinery and equipment fund in the amount of $18,725, a decrease <coughs> expenditures to the capital outlay for building and improvement fund in the amount of $18,725, increase revenues to the golf tra transfers in from general fund in the amount of $18,725, and decrease revenues in the, uh, to the community improvement transfers in general fund in the amount of $18,725. Unlike the closed circuit TV, you do not want to check out this facility until this is work is completed. Um, we have a 20 year old system. It was uh, starting to fail and is in desperate need of these uh, upgrades and repairs. Are there any questions for Greg? Go ahead, Steve. Um, did you have this in the plan at some point in the next few years to replace or was this? We, ha we had it on our plans for um, inspection and routine maintenance, but it wasn't on our plan to replace at this point just out of curiosity how long is the lifespan of a grinder a I grinder know. station that is uh something i would have to find out for okay. you i don't have that but i can find that out and let you know i don't I know i would assume too that it's probably in line with pumps and motors which typically you get five to ten years life out of a if you're lucky i, would, I it's probably ten but yeah. i'll look into it Questions, comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented. State aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve an emergency purchase order for the replacement of the Fellows Creek Golf Club Grinder Station to Kennedy Industries at 4925 Holtz Drive in Wixom, Michigan, 48393, in the amount of $18,725 to be paid from the account number listed for the FCGC Capital Outlay Machinery and Equipment account. Favor for the second motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G5, consider request to waive the bidding process and purchase five self-contained breathing apparatus units. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve waiving the bidding process and awarding the purchase of five MSA G1 self-contained breathing apparatus units from Apollo Fire Equipment in the amount of $37,981. Second. Fire Department's requesting to purchase five MSA G1 model air packs from Apollo Fire Equipment in the amount of $37,981 as stated. To maintain continuity and use, filling and maintenance of the units, the department's requesting to purchase the same model air pack as approved by the board in 2017 for 43 units. Apollo continues to be the sole source vendor of MSA products in Michigan. And Jamie is here to answer any questions you may have. Go ahead, Steve. Um, did we hire more uh, firefighters and that's why we have to add some? Or from well, the we're in the process. We almost have them hired. We're, we're very close, um, but we have added uh, three more members um, just just in the start of this year. But the real reason we're getting these is because of our new fire engine that's coming later this year. Our new and fire what? A new fire engine. Oh. Okay. So it's a driving initiative to ensure that all of the self-contained breathing apparatus stay on each vehicle, uh, so that. They're actually numbered, and it's, a, it's part of an initiative to have fire ground accountability so that when you see this pack, you know that it belongs to Engine 1 crew, and uh, that's one of the main reasons. Thank you. You're welcome. Additional questions, comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion present, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G6, consider purchase of 13 Taser X20P units. Mr. Supervisor, I move to waive the bidding process and, award, and approve the purchase of 13 Taser X226P packages from Axon Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $20,001 utilizing budgeted drug forfeiture funds. Uh, Township uh, Board originally approved purchase of the Tasers in 2005 as a mean of less lethal force application by their officers. At the time, the department policy was established for tasers to be purchased and carried on by all sworn police officers. The annual purchase will phase out 
the last of department's older models and will accommodate the department's increased staffing needs. Um, we're requesting to purchase the 13 units from Axon Enterprises, Inc. Axon uh, Inc. is formerly Taser International. It's a proprietary and sole source distributor of their product. Taser brand is the industry standard. And a feasible alternate option does not exist on the market to date. Are there any questions for Chad? None. Those in favor of the motion is uh, presented, state aye. 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 Motion carries. Is that a single motion again? Yes, okay. Item G7, consider request for the renewal of Vigilant Solutions Intelligent L Intelligence LED package. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the renewal purchase of Vigilant Solutions Intelligence-led pa police package from Capital Electronics Incorporated in the amount of $21,720 utilizing budgeted traffic forfeiture funds. Last year, following competitive bidding process, the Township Board approved the purchase of Vigilant Solutions Intelligent LED Police Package from ILPP from Capital Electronics, Inc., uh, which was a, uh, we shared with you the previous RBA uh, from February of 18. Uh, let's see, Capital Electronics offers a renewal of the ILPP that includes a new camera set that at a reduced rate, renewal of subscription intelligence database only, no new cameras is also offered, but in doing so, any future camera purchases are at the full price rate. The department is requesting to take advantage of the renewal of ILPP to outfit a second patrol car with a license plate reader consistent with the department's five-year strategic plan. And this is some pretty cool technology that we've acquired and want to expand on, right? It's been extraordinary. I, we can, I can speak to just this week when there was a series of uh, almost 100 business B&Es that we coordinated the investigation in Southeast Michigan and um, a little bit of follow-up and using the system we identified uh, the suspect and ultimately Sunday night we arrested the, the crew that's plagued this area. So big deal that we can't really talk too much about tonight. Oh, no, no, it's fine, but... It, it, wonderful thing. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. The, uh, these are for the um, patrol car cameras, not anything to do with the body cameras? Or? Correct. We have one car outfitted now, and this would be a second vehicle that a patrolman that we try to keep out on the road collecting data. It goes into an application that officers have access to. Um, it's been very um, great so far this year. We've helped out with other agencies, uh, murder investigations, and uh, you name it. It's been uh, great. It really cuts down on like surveillance time, so you don't spend a lot of time looking. Uh, well, thanks. Any uh, more comments, questions? Additional? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. That was a single motion. <laughs> That concludes our formal business this evening. Um, is there any public comment? Any public comment? Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, team, any comments, closing remarks? Very good. Board? <coughs> when does the Citizens Academy start? Uh, is that, it's coming, uh, I'd have to look at the calendar. Yeah, I, I, I'm not certain because it's, more of a joint effort with yeah. the fire department and um i don't know why but august seems to like come to mind but i know it's too late one weekend but i'm not certain when the citizen police academy starts or the citizens academy starts up so i could do uh, maybe a follow-up and just a note out yeah. to the trustees when the next couple of days would be good at our next board meeting, March 12th, I will be absent. So when you look at my chair and you don't see me, uh, know that I am at the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks Institute, which I go to annually. It's always the second week of March, so it always conflicts with our first meeting in March, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but I will return a certified municipal clerk because it's a three-year process, so that's exciting. Uh, but I'm sure you all will have a great meeting without me. There's a lot of fun stuff on the agenda. So I uh, just wanted to give the community a heads up that I will be working for you, but I will be in Mount Pleasant learning.
I look forward to that meeting every I, year. It's your favorite meeting every year, I know, Stephen. <laughs> I know. We, we do have an update, Anne Marie. Oh, go ahead. The first night of the Citizens uh, Academy is April 11th. Yeah, I get it confused with, we, we do so many, well not so many, but we also do a youth one, that's the one that's in August, so there you go. Pat, oh, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead, Stephen. Do you have an update on your search for a municipal director? Yes, um, today at staff it was discussed. We, were, we had 40-something um, total applicants of that. Uh, the resumes were, um, I guess, drilled into by HR team, as well as the assessing community that we've hired to help us. Um, and they've whittled the field down to five candidates. And I think March 12th is when that process begins for the assessments. So there's been a meeting held with the five remaining candidates to what the assessment process is going to be. And I believe it either begins or ends by March 12th. And I can't, it begins on March 12th. Um, so we're, it's, the good news is moving, progressing. I think um, nobody's here tonight, but they are uh, the, the remaining managers of the different functional areas and municipal services, I think are doing a pretty good job keeping us afloat and communicating with not only one another, but with the directors as well. So I, I do appreciate that. So thanks for asking. Um, George Miller's question on the tax thing. I don't think we've addressed that and I would like to try to put something together for him. So Wendy, I don't know if you can help me, but Oh, I just need to get information Diane, on the maybe property it's better through parcel Diane's that he's office. referring to. Or the, did you, you got the one was at Lily in Michigan? Yeah. If you could, right, we'll go through the notes because the historically that's something Tim would kind of watch out for and you know follow up on and help us put together a little letter, and I don't think anybody's done that since because it's, it's the second time he's asked it, and I'd like to be able to put it in the folder and say asked and answered, right in the future. All right, thank you. Um, go ahead, Emery. I guess a question. So I noticed on our consent calendar, so we talked about Liberty Fest, and that's coming upon us quickly. Do we have a reckoning yet for how much we spent and how much we made? I know we had talked about it, but I don't think we had, had, had for finalized it. For 2018? Yes. Yes, we do have that. Um, I, I can email out the final report to the board. I don't have... Off the top of my head, I believe this was the first time that we had positive revenue um, for overall for the entire festival in 2018. So that's very so good. But I'll, I'll email out the overall budget to the board. No other questions or comments. Uh, call for a motion to close. So moved. Second. Favor, state aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good night.